The Data Cloud Diaries, using the Ingestion API for Airline Flight Data, Part 1. Welcome back to the Data Cloud Diaries. I've been looking for some interesting data that we could be bringing in to Data Cloud and then run our calculated insights and our streaming insights. And I've decided to grab on airline flight data. So I'm going to be walking you through on a multi-part series how I was able to bring in airline flight data and bring it in from these APIs of tracking real flight information and bringing that into Data Cloud through the Ingestion API. So there are many websites out there that will give you the flight information. Here's just one of them, and it's called Plane Finder. And it allows you to see in real time all the planes flying. You can actually go around the world. So we can come here and pan around and see around the world planes flying. What I'm going to do is this is a tsunami of information, is all this information. I'm zooming in. I live in Arizona, Phoenix, Arizona. And so I'm interested in this information. And I was looking for a way to bring this through an API. So I found this API called Aero Data Box, and it's through a platform called the Rapid API. And I was able to get airline flight information that we could be using to feed into Data Cloud. So here is Postman, and I can look at, here is the URL for, here, for hitting that API. Here we're going to Phoenix, and we're looking for flights between 3 and 3.10 p.m. today. And now we have a list of the flights right here. Now what I can do is I can alter this and change it up by time, or even go to LAX, Los Angeles Airport, and now I can be seeing information of takeoffs and landings out of LAX. So with this API, I'm able to hit an airport and give a time range and some parameters, and I'm able to get flight takeoff and landings. And we're going to be using that to bring that into Data Cloud, and we're going to be running some of our metrics against that. So let's take a look at the steps. So it's going to take multiple videos to get there, but I'm going to walk you through how we're able to do that. So here is my Data Cloud. And the first place to begin is actually to go to the Data Cloud Setup. And what you're going to do is look at the Ingestion API. And I've already set this up and have it running. Rather than deleting it, we're going to create number two. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to connect it and call it Airport. Traffic 2. So this is just a temporary one for the sake of this video while not breaking my existing one. So here's airport traffic two. And so now we have this ingestion API and it needs a spec. It needs a schema. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to import the schema and then I'm going to walk back in the course of this video and the next videos and show how we got to the schema. So the next thing we're going to do is I am using Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code, which are all of us use for Salesforce development, but I've dialed it in for C Sharp development. And I've been building a C Sharp bridge that will hit the API and push into Data Cloud. And in there, I have built a YAML file. So a YAML file is a spec of the object. So this is an object spec, YAML, which is defining the airport traffic object. Now, when we saw the um, JSON coming in, this had objects and sub-objects inside the JSON. And what I needed to do is I wanted to flatten it into one object that would become the object being brought in to the Salesforce Data Cloud. And I noticed that most of these were just elements and sub-elements and sub-elements. So I was able to flatten it cleanly and I think I brought in 99% of all the data. The only thing was this one little array about the quality, basic and live. Other than that, everything was a one data point in. And so what I have created was this YAML file, which has the fields. And you'll see traffic type, departure, airport, ICAO, debark, departure, airport, EDA. So this is the YAML file for my data. And I, what I've done is I've interpreted that. And I'll take you through those steps of how I got to it. So we have this C-sharp object called an airport data scan. 
This is an airport traffic object, which is the flattened file. And there's my two string for debugging. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk in and upload that YAML file. And here it is right here, the airport traffic YAML. And what we're gonna be doing is scanning all the fields. I have them all as text, but you need a primary key and you're gonna need a date time. This is a tricky one, the date time for the measure. We're bringing in measure data, so we're gonna hit save. And so what we have now done is imported the schema file. So we now have the schema file for the airport traffic brought in. And I'm gonna show you that it's very straightforward in data cloud to go to your data stream. And here we are in the data stream. And I can, and you'll see my data stream right here. I'm gonna hit new and create a new data stream using the ingestion API. And now what I'm gonna do is pick airport traffic two and we're gonna pick that same object, airport traffic. It has 34 attributes. We're gonna hit next. Now here, we're gonna pick it as engagement data. This is gonna be time-based data that we can use for our insights. We're gonna choose a primary key, and I actually had put in a, a special field called primary key. And we need, because it's an engagement data, we need a date time. So I have a traffic date time field. Let's scan all of these here. They all look good, they're all texts. And we're gonna hit next. We're gonna pick the data space. This has been a unique challenge, is I've been working in data spaces, and data spaces add levels of complexity because I'm not in the default name uh, data space. But I've stuck with it because I wanted to learn the ultimate complexity. Um, uh, you can, there's a lot of things that are much simpler if you just work in the default um, data space, but I'm staying with the database so I can learn the nuances and then we're going to hit deploy. So now we have created an ingestion API connector using the YAML file. We have now created a data stream um, based on that. And if we want to bring this into a brand new object, we've shown this before in previous videos, I can hit start. And what I'm gonna be doing is doing the mapping to a brand new, so I have it as a data lake object, and I'm gonna do a mapping right here. Click, and we are going to actually go to a custom data model and a new custom object. We've seen this before, and we're gonna hit save. And now we have the mappings. and we're gonna hit close. So what we have created is a second, an air, air, airport traffic two, airport traffic record. Um, so we can go to my data model and you're gonna see two of them, the original one I did to test for this video and the one we're doing today. And you'll see the two of them here. Um, the one that, pre, that were, I got working and then the one that we just created. Now what I'm gonna do is if we go to Data Explorer, we haven't brought any data in. So if we go to the data model object, we can go look at airport traffic two and there's no records. But if we go look at airport traffic one, the one that I did, you'll see that we're already getting records here for flights, Boeings and Airbus, and even picked up a Cessna flight. Um, so we're actually able to bring in this data and bring it into data cloud. So what we're gonna be doing is looking at the steps necessary. And so these are the steps that are required in data cloud. We now have brought up the, the, the ingestion API connector. We have set up the data stream and mapped it all the way to the DMOs. What we're gonna be doing in the next video is I'm gonna walk you through how I went from the postman and brought it in to C-sharp and then how the C-sharp is actually doing a, a special uh, exchange of um, API keys. If we looked at a previous video, when you try to authenticate into Salesforce, what you have to do is you have to do a two-step process. You have to get an authentication token, and then what you need to do is you would need to exchange it 
for a direct token. So this process supports that. So I've written the code that will um, support the key exchange and bring the data in. So we'll stop here. And what we're gonna be doing is in the next video, I'm gonna walk you through what it took to go from the JSON, mapped it, and we'll be talking about how to bring this data into Data Cloud. So thank you for flying high. Join me again, same bat time, same bat channel. And we'll be uh, showing you the future parts of how to bring the data in. Have a great day.